Well, good morning, church. Anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Anybody? <clears throat> hey, we've heard great testimonies of people being filled up uh, throughout the nights of revival. Man, there's some of you really spiritual, went to every single night. Uh, I'm not God. Maybe you get another pearl in heaven. Not sure, but man, God has blessed us, and I'm telling you, and he has just carried that spirit over uh, to this morning. As Jason said, Jeremiah Bullock, who's been our evangelist uh, this week, is speaking today. And uh, man, you're in for a real treat. When I got saved, I was 16 years old, got saved at uh, what is now Hope Church of the Nazarene, and uh, I heard uh, the term evangelist. I'm like, I have no idea what that means, but I read it in the Bible. And Philip was an evangelist, but okay, this, uh, this guy, this evangelist is coming to preach. And I remember hearing him for the first time. I'm like, man, when I grow up one day, I want to be like that. The problem was he's way smarter than me, so I realized I could never do that. But man, Jeremiah has been a great friend, uh, mentor to me from afar and up close. And so you're in for a real treat this morning. So without further ado, introduce to you Jeremiah Bullock. Give it up for him as he's coming out. Come on now. Wow, well, I hope you guys aren't as rowdy as that first service, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, we're going to have, have that up on the screen, but if you want to follow in your own Bibles, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. And uh, it's been a really good week. Um, if I were to, to kind of give you a synopsis of what we've been talking about, um, and would love for you to uh, check out our YouTube channel, uh, pretty much everything we talked about this week uh, here, uh, it's, it's discussed. We go through it on our, on our YouTube channel and, and even uh, get snippets of it on our social media. We'd love to be able to connect with you there. But really what we've been talking about, and I've been seeing it in, in your church. You guys have a great church. I mean, you really do, honestly. Um, you know, I've said it <laughs> I said already this week, you know, lying's not my thing it's not where I struggle so uh if you want to know what you look like in that outfit I'm your guy you know I'll I'll tell you um you guys you guys are killing it you're killing it and and what I love is not just you know all of this which is great it's it's the it's the culture um you know uh, the church has a cult a culture corporately and the corporate culture is affected by the individual people and the cultures in which they live every day because we bring with us here i've heard people say hey leave it at the door yeah i don't think that really works okay we're gonna we're gonna bring how we live every day into the sanctuary so you you, you carry a culture and at what we've been talking about this week is as kingdom people you're to carry the culture of 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 the kingdom like what makes you a Christian is not that I go to church on Sunday. What makes you a Christian is I have God living in my body. That's profound. Like you have the holy of holies inside of you. It's just, it's, it's remarkable. So you, you carry a culture. I mean, you know, Jesus says you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. Isn't it interesting? You affect people by just being in their presence. Um, everyone obviously carries a culture. I was thinking about actually how to say this yesterday when I was in Springfield I'm I'm at Planet Fitness I'm running on the treadmill and uh not treadmill treadmill and um you know going at it and I'm, I'm looking over at this guy who's got like these hundred pound dumbbells you know and um just looks like he could you know lift heavy things and not, not a bad guy but he's carrying a culture Listen, you're going to know them by their fruit. They're going to know you by your fruit, not your doctrine. Okay, not, not, uh, not what you say out of your mouth. They're going to know you by what, by what you produce, what flows out of you. And I've been in the gym and you see the culture of the tough guy who walks into the, he walks into the locker room, you know, and he's just, you know, or the girl that just lives with a constant selfie, you know, I mean, there's. There's, there's cultures of every age, age group. You know, people live in our world. Um, I want to live with the kingdom culture. Um, I, I want to be an influencer, not one who's influenced. I, I, I want to be the presence of Jesus. Like, that's, that's legitimately who we are as the body of Christ. Now, so that's what we've been talking this week. That's your identity. You're, you're a portable tabernacle. You are the presence of God wherever you go. You were created to make everyone around you better. That's literally who you and I are. We're the culture of the kingdom in our world. Yay! Okay? 
Like that's who we are. So we've been talking about that. This, this morning, Jesus is talking about that in this passage. It was just, I really felt like this is where we're supposed to be, and I prayed about it all week long. You know, Dylan, Dylan kept getting with me and going, hey, where are we at on Sunday morning? You know, and I was like, I don't know yet. <laughs> but I really feel like uh, yesterday in particular, this is where we're supposed to be because it's, it's Jesus presenting this idea to his disciples in this passage. He actually gets them away into this area of Caesarea Philippi and he's saying it's the beginning of at the end of this whole chapter he's going to be like listen I'm leaving okay I have to leave I'm going to go to my father and the father's going to send because I leave the Holy Spirit and what's going on inside of me is going on inside of you in a nutshell just and I love what Maddie said I love the pause and what she said I see it all the time people believe the word they just don't believe it about themselves I asked, I was at a church not long ago, and, and I watched the pastor ask this sweet little old lady, and it's always the sweet little old ladies. You can laugh, it's okay. And would you pray? And her response was, no, no, I couldn't do that. And, you know, that's, I could never do anything like that. And I, and I went up to her and teased her, and I'm like, you know, you're exactly right. Everybody can pray, you know, but you. <laughs> We're our own worst critics at times sooner or later you're just going to have to believe what he says about you uh, i've given it several times this week john 14 12 you should write it down john 14 12 jesus says anyone and if you get in the original language do you know what anyone means in the original greek it means anyone <laughs> anyone who believes in me will do what i've been doing anyone he says that about you he's, he's going to say that to the disciples jesus says, says i'm the culture of the throne room so are you the relationship i have with the father the spirit that lives in me it's going to live inside of you everything i've been doing you're going to do how i see you're going to see how i feel you're going to feel what i'm involved in how the father uses me the same for you you're the culture of the kingdom. That begins, that begins by recognizing, uh, recognizing obviously that you're filled with the Holy Spirit, but that you can hear from the Holy Spirit, okay? You were created to hear God. I actually meet people that say, well, I can't hear God. I'm like, yes, you can. You 100%, uh, amen. Praise it, girl, get it. So like, yeah, we can hear. We can hear, from, we can hear from the Father. You were created to hear spiritually. Here's one of the illustrations that I, I use for this. Um, and if it doesn't apply to you, don't ruin it. Okay, Don't raise your hand. Um, but if it applies to you, raise your hand. Has anyone in this room ever in your life been tempted before? Oh, all of us have. Okay. Well, did you know that if you can hear a demonic spirit, you can hear the Holy Spirit? You're like, he tricked me. <laughs> Come on. You were created not just with physical ears, but with spiritual ears. Here's the crazy thing. You don't even have to be a Christian to hear God speak. I mean, if you just didn't decide to give your life to God. You were hearing from the Holy Spirit. You didn't come up with that on your own. It didn't come from the enemy. He didn't come to you and be like, listen, dude, you're bad. Trust me. I know. That wasn't, it wasn't just someone talking to you. The Holy Spirit came and banged on the door of your life. Isn't that phenomenal? He lives in your body. Not every thought that goes through your mind belongs to you. He speaks. When Jesus said, I will be with you always, he wasn't exaggerating. Yay! You are to be led by the Holy Spirit. You can hear him speak. And again, and I don't want to be too pushy on this, although it's the last service and I'm leaving so I can say whatever I want. What I would say to you is that if you have trouble hearing him, are you listening? This is more than just praying before my meals kind of thing. I could pick my daughter's voice out among all the other kids in the nursery. It's a hearing thing. I'm tuned in to her if you're walking and talking and have a lifestyle of prayer you're going to recognize his voice in the times when you need it the most 
you're seriously going to be able to distinguish his voice from every other voice that you can hear. You're going to hear, like it's, you're going to he, distinct, be able to distinguish his voice from the voice of your own heart, which is deceptive. You were created to hear. This is what he's talking about. So everything we're going to talk about in this passage is about hearing. And we're going to blow through this. It's actually really easy uh, to go through quickly. There's some kind of hurdles. Uh, and so I don't know how you've heard this taught in the past. Um, but when you, when you, from the start on, you're going to see everything Jesus is talking about is the coming. Of, that's the whole context of the whole entire chapter. I mean, he's going to move into verse 21. Jesus predicts his own death. Like what he's talking about is, listen, I'm out of here. And, and literally, you're going to need the same Holy Spirit that's living in me inside of you. You were created to hear. That's what this deal is about. That's what this passage is. Let's go through it together, beginning in verse 13. Jesus says in verse 13, he opens up this conversation. Again, he takes him to this area, Caesarea Philippi, which is a really sketchy area. And he just gets away with his disciples, and he's talking to them about the concept of hearing. There's a few different things. We've got two or three different like sermons on this passage. I want to talk to you about one of them. Again, you can go to our, our YouTube channel uh, and, and look at the other ones. But, but this one's on hearing, so we're not going to go into the whole detail of Caesarea Philippi. But while he's there, he brings up this question, who do people say the Son of Man is? That's, that's not really good English, okay? But it's the best we can do with the grammar. It's fantastic Greek grammar. And what he's really asking is, listen, what's the word on the street? What are you hearing out there? What are you hearing people saying? What are they hearing? Who do people say that I am? What I found interesting, it jumped right out, and this is actually a different part of the study, but I want to give it to you. It's interesting how the disciples respond. They, they're, of course, wanting to be encouraging to Jesus, and they say, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or even one of the prophets. It's all good stuff. Jesus is like, hey, what's, what's the word on the street? What's, what, what are people saying about me? And they're like, oh, good stuff, man. Okay, good stuff. There's a lot of good things out there. Jesus is not satisfied with that, which is a fundamental of the kingdom. Because he moves immediately on, because even though all of the things people are hearing and saying, that are even though they're good, they're not kingdom Here's the principle. Did you know there's a difference between good things and God things? Okay, I'm going to have to explain it. I go to a lot of churches that are, that are doing great things. Seriously, doing really good things. They're sending bottles of water to disaster relief. Uh, they're, you know, giving away turkeys at Thanksgiving. They're gift cards at Christmas. They're looking after orphans and widows. All the things in the, in, in the New Testament that were mandated to do. As a, as a corporate body of believers in this community, you have responsibilities to look after the needs of the community. That's very, very plain, and a lot of churches are doing that. Okay, it's all good stuff. However, if that's all your church is doing, you're just another version of a government social justice community program. It's not bad, it's good. The church is supposed to do good things and offer good things, but you're supposed to offer kingdom things. In other words, you're supposed to offer to the world what the world can only get from the kingdom. We don't just offer empathy. We just don't offer sympathy. You can be different, man. You can be born again. You can be new. It's salvation. It's born again. And I'm pretty aggressive on that. Listen, you can be born again or Jesus lied. This is all there is to it. Like, that's who you are. You are profound. Wow. Seriously, you should just get up in the morning, look in the mirror and say, that's what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> that's just who you are. You're amazing, man. You're salt and light. You're spiritual royalty. And spiritual royalty children of the kingdom you have been invited to participate in the business of the throne room you're to be led by the spirit paul says those who are led by the spirit of god are sons and daughters of god you can know scripture and not know jesus satan did so you're to be led by the holy spirit so this is this is what jesus is talking about who's who's hearing out there not who's memorized bible verses 
who knows the right answers. He's not talking about that. What are people saying about me? This is a very spiritual, you know, Jewish people of God culture. What are they hearing? Good things, not God things. So he goes on and he, he spends it on the disciples. And he says, verse 15, what about you? What do you say? And they're stressed out. They're like, I'm not saying anything. Not after that. And then you have Simon Peter. <laughs> Dude, we need Simons. We don't need a ton of Simons. We need Simons. And Simon stands up. This is my favorite. Simon stands up and he says, verse 16, you're the Christ. The son of the living God. What's so neat about this for me, it's Jesus' reaction, which is strange. You're like, why would it be strange? Well, let me explain. Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. It's the first time he's ever gotten formal with Simon. He didn't get formal with him even when he, when he called him. I mean, we know all kinds, we know James and John, sons of Zebedee. We know all kinds of family background about many of the disciples. Not Simon. He's that guy that's kind of like, you know, he's a little, but here, and we didn't learn about him even in his call, just all those. But here, Jesus, gets, it's like this watershed moment, super significant. He looks at him, he looks at him, in fact, he ends up changing his name. Like, this is a really big deal. And my, my first thought was, just because he got the right answer, that's kind of, and, and my first thought was, it can't be about the right answer because there's all kinds of people that have come to the conclusion about Jesus being the Messiah way before even Simon. For instance, he's not even the first disciple. If you end up going into your Bibles later on and look at John chapter 1 verse 51, actually verses 47 to 51, Philip, after he starts following Jesus, him and Andrew, he goes and gets his buddy Nathaniel, finds him under this fig tree, he's all stressed out, you've seen the chosen. And he brings Nathaniel to Jesus and Jesus is like, dude, I know who you are. And Nathaniel says, you're the Messiah. Jesus wasn't impressed. He was like, dude, relax, come on. We're just getting started. Several people have come to the clue. They saw the signs. John chapter 2, verses 23 through 25. Many people at the feast saw the miraculous signs he was doing and believed he's the Messiah. Why is Jesus so excited here about Peter? And you're like, well, it's Peter. Okay, granted, I didn't think about that. But he, yeah, he is Peter. Okay, probably not had too many right answers. But why is Jesus so excited? That just came up. I should put that in the notes. That's probably, that's probably a good idea. But, but why did he get so excited about, about Peter? He answers it. Listen to what he says. Verse 17. Dude, Simon, you're blessed. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my dad. You've been hearing from my father. So he opens up, this whole passage is about hearing. He gets them to side to Caesarea, uh, Caesarea Philippi, and he's like, hey man, what, what's the word on the street? What's everybody hearing? What are they saying about me? Oh, it's all good stuff. Not into good stuff. There's all kinds of churches that are offering good stuff. I'm into kingdom stuff. You need to write that down. You're into kingdom stuff. And he says, what about you guys? What are you hearing? Peter says, you're the Christ, man. And Jesus says, you're never going to be the same. In fact, we're going to have to change your name. I want to say this to teenagers. Um, the Lord thrust me back into teen ministry about four or five years ago. And um, I really feel like, I don't, you can't say more than ever before, but like the next generation has got their hands full with where we're at as a nation and a world. And I consistently, and of course I've been working with teens for, this next year will be 30 years on the road, so I've been working with teens forever, but I'm not, and, and no exaggeration, honestly, I, I, get a, I get a message from one of our social media avenues, you know, email, I'll get a message at least once a month from a mom, most of the time it's from a mom, and she's like, in fact it was this morning, a lady came up to me and says, pray for my daughter. And I, I get it all the time. And, and typically how it goes is, pray for my daughter, pray for my son. They're not bad. They're good kids. <laughs> That's what they say. They're good kids. And I'm like, I'm sure they're not serial killers. Praise the Lord, right? <laughs> you know? No, seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. You know, praise the Lord. But they're like, they're spinning off the... And they're confused. Mom's confused. I don't understand. They went to church every Sunday. 
They knew when to stand up. They knew when to sit down. They knew all the right things to say. They knew the culture of church. They knew the culture of church so well, they know how to goof off and not look like they're goofing off. Like they've been here. And then mom says they graduated and they never came back. Do you know how common that is in our world? Come on. All you shaking your head. That's how I see it all the time. And it's confusing. What happened? And I, I just look at mom and I say, you can know about him without knowing him. This is what Jesus is saying. Peter heard from the father. And, and if you're going to make, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you. Young people, unless you have a train wreck encounter with him, you're just not going to make it in the next season in which we're going. Because someone out there at some college, some professor who is trained to trip you up, they're going to ask you questions that you don't know the answers to. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but I was put in this unique, weird situation by this, you know, guy at a Starbucks. And, man, he was really loud and obnoxious, and it was just, but he was, I can't go into the whole story, but basically, in front of everybody, he kind of trapped me with this question about Jonah and his wife and his sons and their wives getting off the ark. Uh, yeah, off the ark. And um, he was like, so let me get this straight. Um, Jonah and his family were the only ones on the face of the planet at that time. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, so African Americans came from Noah. Native Americans came from Noah. Asians came from Noah. That's what you're saying. And I was like, oh no. And I did. I pulled up my phone, tried to call Dylan. He wouldn't answer. It's typical. <laughs> and you're going to be put into a place where eventually someone's going to ask you a question you don't have the answer to. I have the Holy Spirit. I know who I am. I'm just, I'm just a normal dude, man. Seriously, I'm, a norm, I'm an ordained elder in the Church of the Nazarene, but they're handing those things out, to be honest with you nowadays. No, like, <laughs> you know, I, I know who I am, I have a call, but, like, I know him, dude. Like, I know the person. I'm not religion, and religion ain't going to cut it. It's not going to cut it, man. And I leaned into the arms of Jesus, and I looked at this guy, and I was like, yeah, man, there's all kinds of things about the Bible. In fact, there's other things. You want to sit down, I can tell you some more stuff. Like, there's other things I don't understand. But he's real! He's a real person, man! He touched this woman, she was healed! I come on a little strong. And he, like, backed up. He's like, well, I gotta go. I was like, oh, no, you don't. I followed him all the way out to his car, man. It was hilarious. Longer story. I come back in the, you know, rest, I come back in the Starbucks, and people are like, you know, hey, dude. And I was like, come on. But, um, but he tries to trap me. Sooner or later, honestly, you, you are going to be put in a position. And Paul says you need to be able to give an answer for why you believe what you believe. And that's not going to, he's not talking about study. He's not talking about that. And it's not bad, know the word, I get all that. But what he's talking about is you need to be able to hear. And that's what he's talking about in the verse. He tells he tells his disciples, listen, on this rock, you're Peter, which is Petra, or excuse me, Petros. It's the masculine version of Petra, which is the rock. So he's Petros, we translate it Peter, Petra, which is the rock. And he's saying, you are derived, who you are. I'm giving you the name Peter. Why? Because your literal reality is a result of the rock. What's the rock? Hearing. That's what the whole passage is about. Jesus says, I'm going to build my church on the foundation of hearing the Holy Spirit. You're going to be led by God. And then he goes into this. We've got to be quick on this. He goes into verse 19 and he says, because you hear, you're going to walk in tremendous authority. I mean, that's the whole, when Jesus teaches on prayer in both Matthew and Luke, he says, here's what we're to do. You know, your kingdom come, your will be done here as it is there. You are, the, you are literally a portable holy of holies where heaven meets earth. Just process that. You don't give good advice, you give kingdom advice. Words will be given to you. You have the voice of God living in your body, man. You're profound. When you love, love and the love for a child of God is not an emotion. He's a person. 
When I love someone, I'm not just giving happy, good feelings. I'm wrapping that person in the Holy Spirit. Patience is a person. It's not me not running someone off the road. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally extending the person wherever I go. That's the concept. And he says, you're going to walk in authority. And then he says this crazy statement. Now, just listen to it on our English. And we're going we're to highlight some things up here. But he says, Peter, you're going to walk in authority. Why? Because you're hearing from my father. In fact, whatever you bind on earth, it's going to be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, it's going to be loosed in heaven. And the other disciples are like, Jesus, listen, it's, he's still Peter. I don't care what you call him, Tom, whatever. We know this guy. It sounds like Jesus just gives him, you know, carte blanche authority. Whatever you bind, whatever you loose, it's going to happen in heaven. Well, our English translations, as great as they are at times, to make it more readable, they leave some, some words out. <laughs> And Dylan will explain all this next week. <laughs> Notice our verse. He says, whatever you bind on earth, and it says, will be, and notice there's that little brackets with a C there. And then you come across and it says, whatever you loose on earth will be, and there's a D there. Now that's digital in, in mine as well. Those are there in your Bibles at home. If you look at it, that's going to be there. And if you have the digital version, you can click on it and it'll tell you the phrase that's been left out. If you have those ancient paper documents, you have to look at the bottom of the, tech, uh, the page and they'll give them to you. But you're like, what's left out? It's actually the third verbal form in this verse because there's three. The first verbal, and let's go through all of them, really, because it's, it, it's really important, because what Jesus is saying to Peter is, you're going to be hearing from my Father, you're going to be releasing that at a point in time, it's not your idea, you're not just going to go do what you do, and it's going to change people's lives forever. Here's the first verbal, verbal form. Jesus says there's going to come in time, and you're, you're going to walk in authority because you're hearing, there's going to come a time when you bind something, when you loose something. That's in the present tense. There's going to come a time when you bind something, you lose something. We're going to talk about what that means in a second. The second verbal form is the future. Whatever you bind, it will be bound. Whatever's re that, that's, that's, the, that's the profound power of a daughter or a son of God living in our world. What comes out of your mouth is significant. Whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound. Whatever you loose on earth, it will be loosed. Okay, that's the second verbal form. The third verbal form is what's left out, and it's the past. In fact, most translations don't, don't, don't read, well, not most, some translations don't read, whatever you bind on earth will be bound. It, it should be translated, will have been bound. Whatever is loosed on earth will have been loosed. Meaning that what Peter is binding that will be bound it's already, it, it, it has already been bound. It will have been bound. So it will have been loosed. So in other words, Peter is going to be walking and living in intimacy with the Father, and he's going to hear what the Father has already bound in earth, uh, bound in heaven, and he will bind that on earth, and it'll change things. Now that sounds really theological, until you ask Grandma grandma has been living this way for her whole life you're like how so i was at a church recently true story and this little girl comes out of the nursery comes out of the children's thing after service and she's crying and i assumed was her brother who was not that much older maybe not but he's following her not wanting to get into trouble she can't find mom, but grandma sees her, and grandma's concerned, and she bends down, and the little girl's crying, and grandma goes, what happened? And I'm watching, I'm videoing the whole thing, and grandma's like, what happened? And she goes, he said I'm ugly, and the boy was, this is actually a true story, the boy's like, I did not, I said she was stupid, you know, <laughs> it's a little boy thing, so, you know, I, I would coach him later, but he's like, I didn't say that, I said this, and grandma when, as soon as the little girl said that, I'm ugly, grandma had heard from the father what the father had said about this little girl before the foundation of the world. See, grandma's been praying about that little girl before she was ever born. Grandma's had that kind of insight. Grandma sees the significance of her granddaughter. She knows her value. You with me? 
she knows her value she knows her worth and as soon as that little girl says this grandma says i bind that no she did not okay she didn't freak out granddaughter but it's not about language she looks at this little girl and said that is a lie that is not true and it was amazing because i literally saw this no embellishment this little girl just looks at her like she believes her why because she's grandma grandmas know everything <laughs> Dancer, wait for it, wait for it. You gotta be quicker, Grandma, come on. So, Grandmas know everything, man. They do. They're, they're Grandma and Grandpa. And they've heard. And they speak life. And that little girl will, will not walk under that lie. That's why you need community. That's why you need a body of Christ. Listen, two things this morning. Some of you are living, and dude, Dylan's gonna, he does such a good job at this. We're going to give you an opportunity to, to come forward this morning. Some of you are living under the lies of things that are not true. It's illegal to live as a victim in the kingdom. I'm sorry. Only those who are more than overcomers get in. Because it's just the truth. You're more than an overcomer. That's either true or Jesus is a liar. You are more than an overcomer. Amen, Jeremiah. You're killing it. That's the truth. You're more than an overcomer. You're not a victim. It's easier to be a victim. Not much is expected of a victim. Your value is not in your age. Your value is not in your talents or abilities. Talent, I've seen a lot of talent. Talent can't compete with anointing. You teenagers have the same Holy Spirit in you I have in me. Come on. You're significant. I'm telling you, sooner or later, you're just going to have to believe what, what the Holy Spirit says about you, what the Word says about you. I mean, come on. Especially if you're older. I mean, we, we've got to grow up, folks. Some of you need to respond this morning. I'm just not going to believe the things that my dad said about me. I'm not, I'm not going to believe that. I believe everything you say about me. 100%. And those of you who are spirit-filled children of God, walking with Jesus, love Jesus in the church, you are catalyst of change in your world. And you need to go out into our world and spread the culture of the kingdom. You're, you're, the, light of, you're the light of the world, dude. Come on, girl, you're the salt of the earth. I will not be influenced by that culture. I do not pick up drama. I do not pick up awkwardness. Oh, it's a gift. Seriously, man. When I come up to someone who's in their culture, I don't, I don't pick up a fence and enter that culture. Dude, I carry the culture of the kingdom. I'm literally filled with love personified. Just very quickly, you're not the big deal. You're filled with a big deal, which makes you a really big deal. You are not the big deal. You're filled with the big deal. Makes you a big deal. You just need to start living like it. This is awesome. I go to churches all over the country that don't have this. And I get it. I know. It's just my opinion. But honestly, my opinion's worth more than yours. Um, because I see, I see 40 churches a year. This is my lane. I'm walking out that door in about 30 seconds. And I'm getting in a car and I'm driving five and a half hours to start services in Illinois. A tent meeting, it starts Sunday night and goes through Wednesday. This is my lane. That place is awesome, by the way. But you are blessed. The staff is blessed. The man that God has raised up to be your shepherd is blessed. You need to take the culture of the kingdom into Marshfield. I love you guys. I think you're incredible. You're meeting in a public school. <laughs> you have so much favor on you. Do you know how not common that is? Kids walking up and down the hallways after this group has just prayed over the whole building. Slipping on the oil during gym class. Come on, man. It's who you are. 
I think you're fantastic. Let me pray for you. Father, Dylan's going to walk us through this here in a minute. We're going to have the opportunity to embrace what Maddie was, was, uh, was saying and what the worship team was singing about. Today has come, and I'm going to believe everything you said about me. I'm going to believe everything you're saying about me because I'm, I'm, dude, I, I'm not into good stuff anymore. I'm not just into politically correct good things. I'm into the controversial things of the kingdom. I'm into being love personified. Oh, Father, use me. Use me in these days. We'll give you the glory. Let's stand and worship, shall we?